Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on environmental impact and control. Today we're going to be talking about your impact on the environment, and then we will conclude with the environment's impact on equipment. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into this session. We're going to start with your impact on the environment. First up, you need to comply with governmental disposal regulations. Electronic equipment is not composed of environmentally friendly materials. Items like your cathode ray tube monitors, CRT monitors, and motherboards have some dangerous materials in them that can leach into the environment if they're not properly disposed of. Always follow federal, state, and local disposal guidelines. Also, always follow your corporate disposal guidelines. Sometimes they are more stringent than the governmental regulation. While talking about your impact on the environment, we also need to discuss material safety data sheets, MSDSs. These contain safety information on material found in the workplace. They will tell you what known health issues are associated with the material. They will inform you about the physical properties of the material, so what their flashpoint is, and the toxicity of the material that you're working with. MSDSs will also outline the proper disposal methods for the material, and they will also tell you about the steps that you need to take if exposure occurs. Now, each workplace will have its own set of MSDSs. It's up to you to know where they're kept, and you also need to know what the common hazards are. Now, let's move on to the environment's impact on equipment. First up are power issues. And when we're talking about power issues, the first thing that we need to talk about are power surges. These are an upward spike in electrical current. They can severely damage sensitive components before circuit breakers can engage. Now, surges can be caused by anomalies in the power grid. They can be caused by lightning strikes, and surprisingly enough, they can be caused by power being returned after a blackout. Then there's the brownout. This is a sag downward in electrical current. These can also severely damage sensitive components as the components strain to draw current that is not present for them to draw on. The most common cause is overloaded circuits, either within the building or at the power grid level. Then there are blackouts, the sudden complete loss of all power. Now that we've outlined the issues, let's talk about the control. First up is the surge suppressor. It will protect against spikes in power only. Now, surge suppressors are better than nothing, but better yet are battery backups. The battery backup protects not only against spikes, but it also protects against brownouts and helps to mitigate the effects of a blackout. Battery backups work by taking wall current and delivering it to a battery or a set of batteries, which both store and condition the power before delivering it to its destination. Battery backouts will even out the supply of power. They're very beneficial to have and they will prolong the life of your equipment and help to reduce power issues. Now let's talk about heat and humidity. Heat is an enemy of electrical components. High heat can cause the burnout of sensitive components. Humidity can also become an environmental factor. If humidity is too low, ESD becomes a danger. If humidity is too high, then moisture becomes an issue. So let's talk about how you can mitigate against heat and humidity issues. First up is airflow. Poor airflow allows heat to build up, so good ventilation is of primary importance. Ensure that there is adequate space around the equipment so that air can move between them. In dusty environments, use additional filters and enclosures to reduce dust buildup. You should also remove dust and debris from the inside of cases on a regular basis. Compressed air and specialty vacuums can be used to do this. You should always use proper component handling techniques to protect against ESD. Always wear an ESD strap when working on computer systems. You should also practice self-grounding. 
When you're transporting sensitive components, use an anti-static bag to protect against ESD. Now that concludes this session on environmental impact and control. We talked about your impact on the environment and then we talked about the environment's impact on equipment. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm sure I'll do another one soon.